Oh, gang is sexy. You're gonna have to mind the shadows on this one. I probably shouldn't film these things uh, sitting on my uh, computer desk and playing games because I can't get the light shadow out of the way. Let me um, just turn it off see what happens. There we go. Yeah, a little dark, but better. All right, so let's wrap up Autumn for Barbarossa. So this is number two in my Smolensk little series I'm doing now. I said I was going to do three, and initially the third one I had on my head was Barbarossa Derailed um, from OCS, but I'm not really in an OCS sort of mode. So what I'm going to do is, those of y'all that see this, if you can think of another game where I can play out Smolensk, it'll be a couple days before I get it done, but if you have a good suggestion for a game that maybe I have, maybe I'll give that a whirl. I don't know if I just want to play something too deep. I might, I might just do the OCS thing. Um, I really got my head into GTS right now, and I'm going to keep after that. Yeah, that's not going to work. Turn that light back on. Uh, that's a little better. Okay. So, um, typical result. All right, so I'm going to make this comment right off the bat. With the H withdrawal thing that happens in this game, and at one point it becomes automatic that it will be done. Uh, unfortunately for me in this play here, it happened on the first turn of its availability and it just crushed the Germans. You yank all exploit capable units off the map and you're gonna put like seven back on the map and that's it. Um, somebody give me some historical information as to why he created that withdrawal. Where did he send them to? Was that when he sent stuff to the south or to the north? I can't remember. But so here, I'm gonna say this is a tip which this thing's been around now since 2017, so a lot of people probably already know that. And I don't see a whole bunch of people replaying this thing, but I still think it's a fun game to play. And it's SCS, makes it makes it simple. Aggressively use your exploit-capable units, all right? And when you take damage, take it from those units. And if you get a unit eliminated, he goes into the replacement cup. Well, when the withdrawal thing happens... The units that are in the replacement cup, they stay for the rest of the game. So if you get replacements, you'll be able to reach in that cup, and you might get, now granted, you're supposed to do it blind, but you might be able to pull out pieces of those armors. Now granted, the Germans don't get but one at a time. Come to think of it, I don't think they have anywhere on the map where they get two, more than one, one replacement. So but still, over a few turns, that could be useful. Um, like I say, after the, after the withdrawal, any of those exploit capable units in the replacement pool, they stay in the game. All right. Well, I didn't have any. I don't know. I did. I had. I had three. So, and it paid off with replacements. Now, but once you use that mobility, lose that mobility, that force of mobility. It, while the German infantry is very very strong, it's not enough. You can't maneuver far enough. Now in this game here, I did get lucky here. And was able to move an SSR unit, the motorized division, over to here. They took Viasma, an armored division that, and these were ones that were brought in with the after the withdrawal. Took Rezhev, but then I realized, you know, something. I had them running around in the back here, just trying to take VPs. But the Russians, with their replacements and where they can drop replacements, they can just move right in and take the victory locations. So I determined that end of the game, these Germans up here weren't going to do anything else. Those five victory points were going to cause any headache, and the Russians just started pushing. You'll see they took Vitebsk back up here. They were working on Orel, didn't even need to mess with Mogilev, and they never gave up Smolensk through the entire fight. All right? They fought hard to keep Orel, but eventually the Germans were just too overpowering. They, were, they never gave up Smolensk. That's as close as the Germans were able to get. And like I say, once they lost all this armor... You know, I'm curious, I, this might be an interesting game to play without that withdrawal rule just to see how devastating the Germans could actually have been in this fight right here. Because I got a feeling it probably could have ended a lot faster. So, the Russians were all starting to, they were, they were starting to say punch holes and move forward. And they were just keeping the Germans in check because the Germans could never get enough mass. Even really around Smolensk, I mean, they made some headway, but they never got into the city itself. The Russians were just, once, like I say, once that mobility was gone, the Russians just had the numbers, and there was no way the Germans were going to take it. But we played it out, <coughs> and I think, excuse me, I've been fighting a head cold for a week now. There's, I believe it's 40 points of victory locations. The Germans 
ended up with 10. And if I look at the rules for the victory points, it is, so it would be 40 minus 10, it would be 30, 30 points. So this was a, 30 or more is a massive Soviet victory. Gosh, am I a bad German general in this one here? So, sorry, somebody's outside arguing. <laughs> so this one's over. We're going to wrap this up, Autumn for Barbarossa. Fun play. If you got it, you've, maybe you've played it, maybe you have it. It's SCS, it's simple. Big counters, big hexagons on the map. It's fun to play. Like I said, SCS makes it simple. The extra rules, the scenario rules are really not, they're like a, a page and a half, maybe, at the most. So get it out and play it. This thing is fun to play. Um, so let's wrap it up. Autumn for Barbarossa, Multiman Publishing, The Gamers 2017. Massive Soviet victory. Let's see what I do next. And also, be alert tomorrow. Certain videos are going to start popping up starting tomorrow. Talk to you soon.